right, great, it's 4.44, I'm going to get started. I recognize I'm the last presentation before the end of the conference, so we'll uh, try and make this a little fun, and uh, we can uh, end on good terms. Um, so my name's James Brown, uh, I am the, no, no joke, James Brown, uh, Senior Director of Customer Success at CloudBees. Uh, that what what that means, customer success is uh, really uh, the folks that deliver support. Uh, so the engineers that work with uh, our customers who um, open cases, uh, as well as our customer success managers, who are our team of folks that really kind of work with our customers and ensure that they're getting uh, the most out of the subscription um, and what they've paid for, as well as some technical value added services, and. The story I'm going to talk about here, uh, Democratize Your Knowledge, is uh, really one um, that uh, our, our team, through being um, the, the journey our team took from you know, myself being a pointy-haired manager saying, hey, we have to do something through, you know, to getting it to a place where um, they were doing it and, then, and enjoying doing it, uh, is really exciting and something you know, I wanted to celebrate here at Jenkins World. So um, knowledge um, in general. Uh, we know uh, there's tribal knowledge, there's information silos. Uh, there, there are things that we know that someone else has figured out that, you know, surely I'm not the only person in the world that is having this problem, and, you know, I just, and it drives us crazy. Um, and this, this knowledge as code, this path, was really um, created to drive um, a, a, an efficient delivery mechanism for those types of, uh, for the knowledge that we gain in our day-to-day -day practical troubleshooting experience with our customers in the Jenkins world um, to help uh, not only ourselves become more efficient as an organization, but to uh, help you as, as customers, as Jenkins users, grow and, and really kind of learn uh, yourselves uh, through the knowledge. So my promise today is uh, really work to provide some practical methods for you to break down your own uh, barriers to creating scalable knowledge. Um, outline our practical experience uh, in doing this as engineers. And, you know, I, hopefully reinforce maybe some of the things that you're already doing. Uh, presumably, you're all Jenkins users. You're probably all using it to deliver code uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, not sure that you're necessarily using it to deliver content necessarily, right? Um, so the challenge that we were faced with was to derail the traditional silos um, from establishing in a rapidly growing company, right? So CloudBees, rapidly growing. Um, look, you, you're all a testament to, you know, here at Jenkins World about, you know, just what Jenkins and the community is driving and how quickly it's moving, um, that from a professional perspective, I didn't want our business to turn into every other enterprise technology company in the world that uh, creates uh, their individual silos of knowledge and operational units, um, and, and ultimately, in doing so, create value that maybe other open source subscription-based businesses aren't able to, to provide. Simple. <laughs> well, we'll get there. So, just really quick um, overview of knowledge-centered support. Um, I, I won't go into the details uh, from a, a knowledge consortium of knowledge innovation perspective, but you know, one of the outcomes is our knowledge base, um, which is written using our customers' words because it's what customers use, right? When they, they go to search for a problem. They don't put in the line of code that they're having an issue with. They don't put in the solution. If they had the solution, they wouldn't be searching for the problem. They put in, my system's hung. They put in, I can't do X, Y, Z, or how do I best accomplish this? And this methodology in creating knowledge in those words enables customers to find that information quickly and efficiently. And ultimately, from a framework perspective, we kept it very simple. Why? Well, one, you don't want to read pages and pages and stuff to figure out something. You want to go, hey, this is my symptom. Here's the constraints in which it works, and here's the resolution at the end of the day. Um, and to that end, we try to keep our resolution succinct. We try to keep them visual if we can. We try to keep them in such a way that you can copy and paste a command. Um, certainly, I encourage you to test those commands before you copy and paste anything. Uh, but the, the premise behind it is we create this artifact that is a knowledge base that helps you achieve, solve some problem or answer some question. And then ultimately, the, the process is really about a solve and evolve loop where you continually leverage that knowledge and continually improve on it so it doesn't become stale right, or out of date. So the journey began in 
2014 for myself at Cloudbees, uh, December 2014, and there was one. There was one knowledge article. And it existed for like a year. So someone had the idea to create knowledge, right, a full like year before I had joined, and then created that one. And that, that apparently solved almost every problem that any customer had ever come into. Uh, I actually think, and for you Jiggins users maybe that have Windows agents, it was why not to use DCOM to connect your Windows agent to your Jenkins master. But um, anyway, that, that had legs. It's still out there. We still recommend not to do it in that way. And so I, I was charged with growing this, creating this value, creating this knowledge base, and, and then trying to have a team, because I'm not the most technical person, but have my team of technical people solving these problems do the same. And so after I put my pointy hair you know, manager hat on and I went out there and said, create knowledge, they did. And about a month later, we had five, five knowledge articles. <laughs> now, we, we solved probably 400 cases over that month. So we decidedly delivered on value over that period of time beyond that, those five. Um, and it really uh, you know, <laughs> led to the question, you know, what's the problem? And you know, one of the first ones was WYSIWYGI. Developers don't want to use WYSIWYGIs, right? They don't, they won't, don't want to use yet another tool, right? And, and that was one of the, the first complaints that they had and one of the first hurdles we had to get over. And to that end, we asked, you know, and maybe it, would have, it seems obvious now that I should have done this at the beginning, what would you want to create your content in? What would you want to author content in? And that's really where, um, actually, in, in Paris, with a, a team full of engineers, we sat down in a co-working you know, facility and, and had this aha moment. Um, well, we recognized that on a day-to-day -day basis, they were writing code. They were writing patches. They were creating features. They were, they, you know, our engineers at Cloudbees that are in, in the support delivery team are upstream maintainers uh, of both Jenkins Core and plugins. And, and so they're developers. They're developers at heart. They're engineers. And what they used on a day-to-day -day basis was an IDE. So how could we create this environment or some mechanism for them to leverage their IDE, the tool that they're in, their preferred, you know, getting rid of any religious words, you know, use Eclipse, use, you know, what, what, IntelliJ, whatever you wanted to, to, to solve this problem yourselves. And really, that was the genesis for knowledge as code. And... Certainly, there's, there's a lot of history here as far as how we got there, you know, the decisions that we took for creating, um, you know, leveraging Markdown instead of ASCII doc, and some of that had to do with the tool chain um, from a publishing perspective that we had created. And, um, but, but ultimately, you know, having our engineers create knowledge, create content, author that content, in their IDE using a very simple formula, using a simple mark language like Markdown to create it. Um, and not only that, but, but keep it in an SCM, right? We leverage GitHub. Um, then enabled us to actually scale this knowledge in ways that we had never, that you could never do when just publishing to a presentation layer at the end of the day. So certainly knowledge on a presentation layer, fantastic. Google for it, you can find it, it's indexed, and, but, but it requires you to, to read and to, you know, it, it's really a single channel kind of um, presentation and we really were looking for an omni-channel opportunity. And so Knowledge as Code started with creating content in Markdown, hosting it in our SCM, and then creating a simple job in Jenkins that went through a series of uh, options, I'll show you our pipeline later, um, to then ultimately publish this information at the end of the day. So, you know, for, for me, we went from, well, my slides are a little messed up. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get to the, the winning slide here earlier and get down into what that looks like practically um, so you can kind of learn. But it, very easy, uh, as a case study, our publishing knowledge, um, which you can see, um, we, we check in our code, um, run it through Jenkins, and then publish it to the thing. Um, to um, our presentation layer, which our case management system manages today. So what, what does this mean? Well, it meant that just like code, anyone can contribute. I didn't have to create an additional user for in our case management system. I didn't have to give anyone access necessarily that didn't 
want it or need it. Um, and, and in our case, didn't have to pay extra to have people necessarily contribute back to that platform. Um, it, it enables you to bring your own IDE at the end of the day. Everyone knows GitHub. Everyone knows their own IDE. So it was really easy. Everyone knows Markdown. Even if you're, you prefer ASCII doc or some other solution, ever, it, it's easy enough that anyone can get it, even myself. Um, and one of the really cool outcomes of this is that when you start hosting your knowledge, and, and for any of you that are in a consulting capacity or have consultants um, that, that you work with regularly, you can actually take your Git repository on the road, right? So you know now knowledge, if you're on site at a customer or on site at somewhere where there's no internet access, rather than being on your own, even as smart as you guys are and you have the and your your consultants are to solve any problem, they can now have the collective knowledge of CloudBees on their laptop to be able to go ahead and solve problems real time while they're on site with a customer. Right, so incredibly valuable. And ultimately, it's version controlled. We, we treat it like code. You, you know, we, we fork our repo and you know, create, um, it, it enables everyone to give an opportunity back to ensure that subject matter experts in a specific domain, um, if you were outside of that, have the opportunity to weigh in on the actual content that's being provided from a technical merits perspective. And then our pipeline. So what's really cool about this, now moving forward um, into the actual, well, what do you do with the bits once you have them, and what, what can you potentially do? Um, well, we leveraged Pipeline as a solution, and you can see here um, you know, the stages in which we do formatting validation. So we all know that you want some consistency. You don't want it to be the Wild West. And so we have, we check for issue, environment, resolution, make sure that the markdown is uh, accurate, all automated. We then have a technical acceptance stage, and that's where an SME, if you weren't an SME who created it, can go in and, and it's a gate to check that everything that we are publishing to our customer base who are gonna use this can rely on it, that it's technically accurate. For those of you that are in an enterprise technology world where uh, you know, maybe your brand just changed uh, you know, this week, you know, we have a, a brand uh, stage where brand has the opportunity to vet uh, and provide rules and policies for what we're pushing out to ensure that it's CloudBees Jenkins platform and not just Jenkins Enterprise, or that where we are using any kind of logos, that those are accurate. And then, you know, ultimately, in our pipeline, we also have the ability to where when we create content, um, our customer success team, our customer success managers who work with our customers and understand what's important to them can be triggered or notified of content that's relevant to their customer base. So not only, again, do we make this available on demand, um, all of this happens uh, in a matter of seconds, as you can see here from a, a, a developer writing the content and publishing it, truly a case of continuous deployment if I were going to make that distinction, um, we, we really have the, you know, we, we not only make it available, but our customer success managers, the people looking out on your behalf, are actually pushing it to you as well, where they know that you care about it. So it's, it's really exciting stuff um, at the end of the day. And then, surprise, when you make it easy for engineers and developers to create content in their own IDE, we go from five to 500 in, in no time. What does that drive from a, a visibility perspective on your website? It goes for, or on our customer portal, it goes from having 2,000 views at the beginning of the year to over 40,000 views of your articles at the end of the day, right? So really from a business perspective, it makes sense. Um, and from a, a and, well, from, uh, to encourage your developers to create more content, it absolutely makes sense. And that's a bottom line impact that a traditionally cost center support, right, can actually have on a, on a business, which is, which is a big deal. So I'll give you one advanced use case. Um, and some of you, if you are customers, may or may have not seen this, but we leverage our knowledge in more than just a presentation model. 
we also use it to do validation tests. So the same artifact that we create knowledge um, in, that, that knowledge-based article, also has some metadata where our engineers, where they can create a validation test against the support bundle as an artifact. So logs, you might, uh, logs, et cetera, that we might be able to categorically point you back to a specific known issue. And so this is something that we use internally right now to really drive efficiency in our day-to-day -day operations. So rather than having to solve the same problem twice, or even where maybe as a customer you have brought um, the, a, a case to us where you know, maybe you did peruse the knowledge base or not and didn't find a solution, we have the ability to point that out very quickly and very programmatically leveraging the, the knowledge as code and that systematic uh, at Butler system soon to be available on the customer portal for you, uh, for customers to be able to run on demand uh, for their systems and gain the same knowledge back that we're able to deliver on a day-to-day -day basis. So what's the return on this? Um, and, and this is really where the rubber hits the road, right? Training. So as I bring on new engineers, right, as I'm getting them up to speed, the knowledge base and, and the fact that we have so much knowledge through, present, through creating this, through this mechanism, means that new engineers that maybe haven't had as much experience in Jenkins in a practical setting or who have a narrow focus are able to learn. Similarly, you are as well as customers and people that leverage the knowledge base. Uh, from a collaboration perspective, we often find how we solve problems aren't always the best way to solve a problem. And being able to create knowledge quickly and in a means that you as customers or as subscribers to the Cloudbees network can go ahead and contribute uh, back to is a hugely valuable thing. And selfishly, from a support delivery perspective, case deflection, where customers can solve their own cases, um, that, that's, uh, that's uh, a guilty pleasure, I suppose, uh, for myself. That said, I know as customers, you also don't mind. You don't have to talk to an engineer every time to solve a problem, especially if there's, it's right there um, and available. So I promised to keep it short and sweet. I probably spoke a little too quickly, but I will give you guys the floor for any questions that you might have and happy to dig down any more deeply um, into that, the technical aspects of uh, the Jenkins job, the pipeline, or any other hurdles that we had from a cultural perspective in adopting knowledge as code. Any questions? Yeah, absolutely. So specifically, um, the the knowledge base, presumably, correct? Yeah. So this is um, go.cloudbees.com, the, the Cloudbees network. Uh, you can visit our knowledge base by going here. Um, and where you start to, we break down logically our, our knowledge into a few segments today um, from a, uh, I can't really read it, uh, from there, Cloudbees Jenkins Enterprise, Operation Center, um, we're we're going to start creating some more categories like pipelines specifically where the metadata enables us to do this on demand. Yep. I could. Correct. Well, we create a tax. Yes, uh, we have a, a taxonomy that they they have, and and our portfolio is small enough that it's it's not too difficult to, to grasp right now. But um, certainly uh, going forward, we can leverage things um, through like the case itself to be able to populate that metadata to make it a little more brain, as branded as possible anyway, for engineers to create content. Yep, and um, so as an example, um, where's, a, where's a good one? Uh, I think uh, uh, environmental wasn't the word I was looking for. Is that a word, environmental? All right, never mind. Live demos. Shame on me. 
Um, I was looking at a pretty one I knew had pictures. But this gives you an example of you know, customers, uh, how to programmatically connect a client master to operation center, you know, basic usage, um, the environment that it belongs to, and then uh, you know, some, some actual scripts, et cetera, that you can leverage to do that. Um, you know, one of the challenges we actually had very early on was um, what were the pictures, publishing the pictures. That was a particularly onerous thing where they had to upload all the, the, the pictures they were going to use and do it all in one place. But um, the team, uh, again, as engineers, they made it as easy as possible for themselves to be able to do this. And, uh, and one of those lessons learned, um, I think, in this case, we're leveraging Zendesk. Um, and so I think that CLI uh, that we wrote to publish all this through is something that we're looking to make available as well for other people that might be using this case management system to do the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I, my engineers are probably a better person to do that at a technical level, but um, it, it's pretty basic. Um, so when you write, it's it's markdown number one. So we look for things like uh, the the formatting uh, environment. Well, there, there's probably two validation pieces, but uh, the actual content itself, we look we just look at the markdown. So we know everything has you know for a solution type from a, a content type perspective is issue environment resolution. It's got you know hashtags for bold headers and you know, where you have multiple lines, you, you have bullet points. So it does all that from a content perspective. But then the validation piece, um, so we have a tool chain in the background that um, was called, the, the brain is called Jarvis. The external service is uh, we call at Butler. And um, basically it's, they're, they're anything from shell scripts um, really, any language you want to write um, in, generally any kind of scripting, Perl, Python, Shell. Um, and what we do is, as we solve problems, we take what we can programmatically based on versions, based on some logging, right, you know, very specific logging, to then tie that back. Um, we, we, it's part of the metadata of the article, such that when App Butler runs and it does it, that's actually a Jenkins job as well, so I, I probably should have expanded on that, but it, it brings in a support bundle, which is an artifact that you can create. Um, by the way, um, if even if you're OSS customer, you know, you're using OSS Jenkins, you can install the support core uh, plugin, and I highly encourage you to. Um, but uh, it, uh, we take that artifact back. It runs through a Jenkins job that runs through this, uh, all these uh, tests that we've created manually based on all these cases uh, case we do. Uh, I say all these. Um, it sounds like it, would take a, it takes like a minute and 20 seconds for it to actually run probably 500, 1,000 uh, tests that we've written so far, uh, so known issues. And then the, because they're a single artifact, it gives us the ability to actually um, correlate it without really any thought whatsoever. So as we identify it, it already knows the knowledge article that it's part of um, and able to give that back, um, as in the one example that I provided. Um, so we, we don't really treat them differently, um, and we're moving, we're, we're quickly moving in where it's all the same. Uh, so whether it's documentation, whether it's knowledge, whether it comes in through a support case or some other artifact. But um, the knowledge that we create very specifically, that is living, right? So we curate that. We know how many people have viewed it. We know how many people have left um, you know, from that article, uh, presumably because it provided value and, and how frequently that happens. So we, we curate this such that it's not uh, very static. but. You know, how do you use it when, um, practically speaking, if you are a subscriber and you go to open a case, um, part of the, the system will go and search through um, all of the, the documentation and knowledge that we have available and provide you recommendations based on those, you know, again, using the words that you, most people would use to actually search for their symptom um, to go ahead and surface the right knowledge articles um, at a point in time where even, you know, you're just about to create a case. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. Um, end users can. Uh, I highly encourage you to. Um, today, this is probably um, so you, you're able to comment um, on these articles. In fact, there's some really great articles, um, which is making my case to progress our community, our subscriber community. So one of one of the things we we at Cloudbees don't want to do is compete, right, with the broader Jenkins community, and and so we we want to kind of deliver any uh, features that that might do something like that very through a very narrow focus. Um, in this case, we started with enabling customers and subscribers um, and 
people registered to be able to comment on these types of things. But what we're seeing are full threads of conversations happening on a knowledge base article um, that that particular aspect isn't surfaced up. Right, um, so it takes you to read through that and then go, oh, hey, here are four other ways that you know these three other customers did it. So I'm excited to see that only because it's progressing our agenda towards creating a subscriber community where you know industries and enterprises can communicate with one another um, through the Clobby's network. Exactly. Um, well, I, I, right now I, I keep the standards very low. <laughs> what I, at least from uh, you know we, we're relying as much as we can on the the jobs themselves to validate and, and make sure that you know uh, things are right. So we do primers, but yeah. So again, really exciting. Like all of a sudden, knowledge can be created. Well, not all of a sudden. Knowledge is already being created by professional services, by solution architects, by engineers, by people that aren't traditionally in that support capacity where you expect this knowledge, you know, in this narrow sense, right, from a solution per perspective to come from. And so what we've seen is exactly that. Making this available and making it through, you know, uh, for someone to actually do in their own IDE and, and commit back to an SEM means a consultant who's on site at a customer who we all know and inevitably find some bug or find some problem that they solve that we've never solved before. They write that article when they come back, you know, when they come home from that trip, they, they commit all of those things. And now all of a sudden, you know, we've multiplied that knowledge beyond just those practical issues that customers raise, uh, raise for us um, through the support channel. But now that you get through the practical things that solution architects on a daily basis, you know, solve for our customers as well as professional services folks. So, you know, again, that channel and this knowledge as code me mechanism is a multi has a multiplier effect on the value that you get from a subscription and what CloudBees is able to offer. That that's the uh, that's exactly correct. So yeah, um, and for posterity's sake, the the com the comments that people do make on these knowledge articles aren't version controlled, aren't checked back in, and and uh, created. It's uh, it's today a, a fact. Um, but but I also think it's because that's not necessarily the the channel for that. Um, I think for that conversation to be had. What I, I think where I want to progress is this being a platform into that community, into a, a forum where you can do more with that type of data than what you can do through this uh, so presentation model um, that we have available today. That's a great point. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you all for the questions. Have a great evening.